Hello and welcome into the KE Report. I'm your host, Shad Markwitz, and we're getting an update today from Jordan Roy Byrne, founder and publisher of The Daily Gold. And we'll put a link to The Daily Gold under this interview so you can follow along with Jordan's analysis and work. And Jordan, I was reading one of the missives to your subscribers earlier this week, and you were discussing the constructive setup you're seeing on the charts as far as the ratio charts of gold versus GDX and gold versus GDXJ, starting to see a little outperformance in the mining stocks, which is what we want to see in a good bull run. And you were saying this is exactly the kind of time in this pattern where you'd expect to see that. So maybe walk us through what you're seeing on the ratio charts of gold versus GDX and gold versus GDXJ. Yeah, there's quite a bit of evidence that that we could be seeing the next leg higher. And I know it. You, you look at gold and you say, wait, this is still in a consolidation. It had the good rebound, but you look at the action this week, uh, not that great. Rejected at 2,400 pretty strongly. But when you look at the gold stocks, there's a number of things that are really positive that are basically hinting that, you know, this could be the very start of the next move higher. And as you noted, the ratio charts, this is something I noticed last week. It wasn't the first thing I was looking at, but I looked at these and I saw that GDX against gold, GDXJ against gold, they're kind of forming inverse head and shoulders. I mean, they're not perfect patterns, but you know, they're they're decent enough that you could refer to them as those patterns. And looking at it this morning, GDX against gold, that's now breaking out. So that's not quite at a 52 week high, but it's broken out of the bottoming pattern. So that's a very good sign. I mean, I think it's an 11 month high for the sector. GDXJ against gold hasn't broken out, but that's a function of in recent months, it's been stronger. And so its shoulder is at a higher point. If you look at a chart of GDXJ divided by GDX, it's actually really, really bullish. So that's another point to add on. And mind you, this is all happening when you have gold consolidating. I mean, you have gold below 2,400. It hasn't broken out yet, not even close in a very short term sense. And, you know, with this type of action, you'd expect gold would be at, you know, 2550 and it had already had made a new high. So the, the miners are actually really leading here. And I'm not sure, you know, I'd have to look at the charts and look at some history to get a sense of when the last time they're really outperforming when gold was not in breakout mode, at least in a short term sense. So it's, it's very, very encouraging action for the sector. Yeah, and it's a question we've been asking people for a while is even if gold consolidated at the $2,300 to $2,400 level for a while, could the miners keep gaining traction on the underlying metal because they had still underperformed? So now to see the mining stocks outperforming gold and even the juniors outperforming the seniors, as you mentioned with the GDX versus GDXJ, those are encouraging signs. Something else you've written about, though, and, and I'd love you to unpack this for people, is you use the advanced decline line as another indicator. And just as far as a directional tool, what are you seeing with the advanced decline line that leads you to be even more encouraged? Well, earlier in this consolidation, it was making higher lows relative to GDX. And so that's that's always a good sign, although I, I was still a little skeptical of that. Uh, because gold had tested 2300 several times so a few weeks ago i was i was skeptical of that but i believe at the end of last week th there were two big moves in gold i think after the wednesday move or maybe it was a friday move it, anyway it's not terribly important but basically by the end of last week the gdx advanced decline light had made a new high and that, that was a new 52 week high and so that had not made a new 52-week high since 2020. So it's one thing when you have higher lows, that's an important positive divergence just in terms of technical analysis. But when you make a higher high and you break out to a new 52-week high, I mean, that's that's really serious. That has significant weight to it. So you have that. And look, the advanced decline line, I, I like to call it a trusty leading indicator because it is. Now, it, it, it's not always perfect. I've been using this pretty actively over the last six or seven years or so. And there have been some times when the signal has not bared out, but very bullish signal at the end of last week. And so what are you seeing this week? You're seeing gold not really do that much. And yet the miners are being bought. They're moving higher. They're outperforming gold. 
pretty strongly this week while gold is correcting and consolidating. So just really, really bullish action for the sector. Well, and I want to bring silver into the equation, too, just because it's uh, gotten back out of the funk it was in and started moving higher as well. And the silver stocks have been taking off. I know that the silver stocks are a little wonky and that they are not as active of a market. They're more thinly traded, not as many people in those. But when you just look at something like silver and the silver stocks, how are you looking at those? Similar to gold or are you encouraged by what you see? Yeah, I will say silver relative to gold. This week has been not that great for gold, but silver has been slightly outperforming gold the entire week. So we're we're correct and consolidating. So that's a good sign in addition to what's happening with the stocks, which is way more important. But so silver is holding up better than gold this week. You know, I, I looked at the SIL to silver and SILJ to silver charts, and you do see the same inverse head and shoulders patterns, but they're just behind where the gold stocks are. So th- those could break out eventually and outperform silver. I, I, I think if you're telling me that silver is going to go to, let's just say 35 in the next few months, I would tell you, I, th- I think the silver stocks are really going to outperform that move the way they're setting up. So stepping back and looking at this from a bird's eye view, this is when you see the stocks really outperform because they outperform. We talked about a couple months ago. The stocks are like options on the metals now because of the metals ETFs that didn't exist you know, pre-2006. And so options perform the best you know, after a huge recovery or after a breakout. So we have this breakout move in gold and you had the first pullback, although it was really, it's really turning into more of a bullish consolidation. But it makes sense after the first pullback or consolidation. That's the point when the stocks will really start to outperform and even lead the metals. And I recall in two, the same thing happened in 2009, where after the depths of the financial crisis for precious metals, you know, gold bottomed around 700 at the end of October 2008. Then it raced up to 1,000, uh, I think, by early February. Then it consolidated for six months before it broke out. But during that consolidation, the stocks started to outperform. Even juniors really started to get a bid. And so a lot of stocks were making higher highs before that second leg in that cyclical bull market for gold, you know, before it had broken out again. And so n- not to say it's perfectly similar, but we're seeing a similar thing right now where you know gold made the first move. Of course, it was this epic breakout. Now it's consolidating. And so during this consolidation, we're seeing buying and accumulation in the miners. You know, more people are coming into the sector. And so miners and even some juniors, they're, you know, making higher highs or poised to make higher highs before gold really starts this next move higher. And silver too. Yeah, Jordan. I think I remember just a couple of months even discussing this exact same topic of what we thought would play out. And you were making the case historically that typically gold's the prime mover. It moves first. And then it's really when gold settles back the first time and actually actually has its first consolidation that you then see the gold stocks kick it into gear. And then after that, silver has a lagging factor. So it makes sense that the charts of SIL and SILJ to silver are lagging what already happened in the gold stocks because it takes a little longer for silver to get the engine going, but then it plays catch up like what's happening this week. And then finally, the silver stocks kick it into gear. So it's really happening pretty much exactly as you laid out that it would happen or what we see historically. But a lot of people are getting frustrated that gold's getting stuck here. When you look at gold, do you see any catalyst to send it higher or are we just going to be stuck kind of in a consolidation range for the yellow metal and let everything else in the sector catch up to it? Well, I mean, the the catalyst is obviously at this point more economic weakness that causes rate cuts, basically. So, I mean, I think I haven't looked in a couple of days, but the market's mostly priced in a cut in September. And so, you know, markets lead, they're a discounting mechanism. So, you know, the market is sensing that you're going to have Fed easing and lower real interest rates. So I, I don't think gold needs a catalyst i just think it's some time for this consolidation to play itself out it's been consolidating basically since april i'm just looking at the daily chart and i mean it it looks pretty good i mean it's held 2300 if you look at the weekly chart i think it's bounced off 2300 like four or five different times so 
yeah, it doesn't look to me like it's ready to break out. Maybe it'll take another month or two, but I'm not worried about gold whatsoever. I mean, the, what the miners are doing, they're telling you that, that gold is going to move a lot higher eventually or soon enough. Well, just one follow-up on that, because we've talked a lot about the intermarket analysis and how in a true secular bull market with some legs, you really want to see that corrective move in the general equities that brings the buying into the precious metal sector. We've had a couple of people on the show recently that say, oh, they can just keep moving up together. And you've pointed out that, yes, they can. But I'd love you to distinguish it again that, yes, gold and the gold stocks and silver and the silver stocks can move up with the equities for a time period, but it won't be that explosive longer term move people are looking forward to. It really requires a correction in the general equity. So just maybe break down that nuance, Jordan, that, yes, everything can move up in tandem for a period, but then it would change how far and how long they go. Yeah, if we're thinking about this in terms of charts, you know, take a look at my gold to 6040 chart. You can Google it or look on my YouTube. I mean, I, I talk about it almost every week, but this is gold divided by a portfolio that's total returns, what so includes dividends. So 60% stocks, 40% bonds. You know, I have it going back 100 years. And the two big secular bulls in gold, they really began in earnest, you could say, when there was a, a clear breakout against the gold against the 6040, I should say. Now, this happened in 1972 and 2002 when we got those signals. And so this has kind of been consolidating the last you know, three, four or five years or so, and it's yet to break out. I mean, the, the ratio in gold's favor. And so when you get that breakout, that's a signal that capital is moving away from conventional assets and into gold. And so we have not got that yet. Now, yes, some capital from bonds has moved into gold, but the stock market is still in a secular bull. And so that has continued to make higher highs. And so there is a pool of capital that is still, I mean, a huge pool of capital that is still going into the equity market. And historically, you look at these secular bulls and gold they really gained traction after that secular bull and the equity market cracks. Now, there is some, you know, the 1960s. I mean, I've talked about that where the S&P was still in a secular bull. I mean, it in real, you know, the Dow peaked in 66. I mean, the for the S&P, it was late 68. But that was a marginal high versus 66. But gold stocks really took off in the 64 to 68 period. So, and gold gold would have if we weren't on the gold standard at that point. And so, you know, my point is, yes, there is some history where the two have moved together, but, you know, gold stocks were really strongly outperforming at that point. So I would like to see gold strongly outperform the stock market and break out, make that breakout in terms of my 60, uh, in terms of gold against the 60, 40 in my specific chart. And so it's just, you know, in layman's terms, just think about all the money that's going into the stock market and buying stocks. They're happy. New set, you know, secular bull market is ongoing. It's going to keep going. And so that massive pool of capital is going into stocks. It's ignoring gold. I mean, look at what's going on with the gold ETFs. They're not investing in gold. And so, yes, gold could go higher. Maybe it could go to 3000 or a little bit higher, but to get that cyclical move that goes to 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 in the next two, three years, that's really possible. But you, you, you need some kind of a downturn where capital moves out of the stock market and, um, you know, of course, into gold and precious metals. And, and I'm interested to see with the coming rate cuts from the Fed, if some money will start to come out of the stock market and go into the gold ETFs, and then you see that start to pick pick up. So they're kind of linked there, the money going into the gold ETFs and the you know money that's going into stocks and not gold at this point. But that's just the reality. Like this move so far is it's being driven by you know central banks and foreign demand and you know, de-dollarization and you know all of that. But no money is is coming from U.S. retail investors, which is a huge amount of money, by the way. It's all going into the stock market at this point. Yeah, I think it's such a solid point, Jordan, just because as exciting these short term moves can be where you start seeing gold stocks gaining on gold and silver stocks gaining on silver, 
the real fireworks haven't even started yet because we really haven't seen the capital flows leaving the equity markets as they correct and entering the ETF flows for GLD and SLV and PSLV. We haven't seen that yet in the West. And to your point, most of the gold support has been central bank buying or buying in the East. When we finally see the Western investors start pivoting into the sector, the moves that we're seeing on days like today are just going to be pale in comparison to the moves that we can see in a precious metal sector, full on bull market. So we'll keep following along with the longer term thesis. But in the short term, Jordan, it's just nice to cover some of the constructive things you were seeing on the charts. And if people like getting Jordan's analysis, definitely click on the link below. It takes you over to the Daily Gold where you can follow along with Jordan's work and get these kind of updates real time. Jordan, thanks for coming on the KE Report and looking forward to our next conversation. Thanks for having me.